I'm Shay with Members Connect, and we're so glad you're with us today. If it's your first time, whether you're in the building or online, head to Members Connect so we can help you with your next steps or to join a team. As you know, it's 2021, and this year what we're going to do is team up. So let's go ahead and team up with the worship team in the auditorium. Morning, ICC. Whether you're in the building or you're at home, we are excited to be with you today. Um, we know that God has something amazing in store for us, just like he has every week. But we are especially excited to celebrate with you guys and prepare a way for God to just do something outstanding in people's lives. So this first song we've done, but it's really an invitation. So wherever you are, just clear a path in your home, in your house, in your mind, and let's make room for the Holy Spirit to come as well. Are y'all ready? They sound ready. Are y'all ready? Y'all ready out there? We ready. <laughs> so God, you're welcome in this place, Lord. We know that you, God, in your spirit, there's freedom and joy and peace and love and all of the fruits of the spirit. So we just declare, have your way. Who am I that you would come and see me? I'm overwhelmed, can't catch my breath, can hardly breathe, yeah. I'm excited, I can't sit down, I feel your spirit all around. Expecting a fresh anointing to fill this place. Hello! 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 my breath can hardly breathe help me say no I can't sit down I feel your spirit all around there's a fresh anointing in this place hello hello, hello. oh we say hello, hello. Oh God. Who am I that you would come and see me? I'm overwhelmed, can't catch my breath, can hardly breathe. Somebody say, I'm excited. No, I won't sit down. I feel your spirit all around. I'm There's a fresh anointing in this place. Say hello. You 
you are welcome in this place, oh God. You are welcome. You are welcome. You are welcome in this place, oh God. And we can't hold back. So glad you're here. We feel your love in this atmosphere. We can't hold back. So glad you're here. We feel your love. We can't hold back. We can't hold back. So glad you're here. We feel your love in this atmosphere. We can't hold back. So glad you're here. We feel your love in this atmosphere.
How many of us are excited that he is risen? How many of us are excited that we have a God who defeated death in the grave? A God that rose on the third day. He could have died and stayed in the grave, but he rose. He rose, but we rose with him. Our sin died, and we rose with him in a new life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all know this, sing it with me. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Hallelujah, you have won it all for me, and death could not hold you down. You are the risen King, you're seated in majesty. You are the risen King. Help me say, Hallelujah. You have won. You have won the victory. Say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won it all. You have won Say, death could not hold. Death could not hold you down. Say, you are the risen King. Say, you're seated in majesty. Cause you are the risen King. Say, death could not hold you you are the risen king, and you're seated in majesty, because you are the risen king. One more time, say death could not hold you down, because you are the Your life, so I'm alive because your life help me say I'm alive because your life so I'm alive I'm alive because your life so I found joy I found joy because your life so I found joy because I found joy because your life. I found peace because. Your life. I found rest. I found rest because. Your life. I'm alive. I'm alive because. Your life. I'm alive because. I'm alive because. Your life. I'm alive because. You kept me, 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 in the midst of my storms, you kept me, 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 when I was dead in sin, you kept me, 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 I'm alive because you kept me, you kept me. 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 Hallelujah. 
You have won the victory. Hallelujah. You have won it all for me. Death could not hold you down. You are the risen King. You're seated in majesty. You are the risen King. And death could not hold you down. You are the risen King. You're seated in majesty, oh, cause you are the risen King. Can we sing that one more? Death could not hold you down, cause you are the risen King. And you're seated in majesty. Cause you are the risen king. And death could not hold you down. Cause you are the risen king. And you see it in majesty. Cause you are the risen You kept, you kept me, 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 I know about y'all, but you kept me, you kept me, you kept me, you kept me. You kept me, you kept me, you kept me, oh, you kept me, 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 you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy. You're holy, 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 hey, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, so you're risen, you're risen, you're risen, hey, say, you're risen, you're risen, you're risen, you're risen, you're risen, you're risen. You heal, you heal me, you heal, heal me, you heal, you heal me. Oh God, you heal, you heal me, you heal me, you heal me. You save me, 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 you save me,
You are 
interesting they sung in one part you got me and the father talked to me during that session it made it personal to me see that's my declaration you got me I no longer want to rule my life I don't want to I want you to have me I I used to do a whole lot of things, Lord, but I want you to have me. My yesterday still talks to me in my mind, but I need you to have me. But then there was the other side. There was a realization, but then there was a declaration of my faith. You got me. When life circumstances come and touch me, you got me when health fails for the moment you got me when i got more weak left than money you got me that's the most precious place to be where the king of kings the Lord of Lords, the one who death himself could not stop, says, I want you. If no one else accepted what Jesus did but you or me or Matt or Shay, he would say, that was good enough. I'll go through everything I got to go through because I want them. That's a reason to celebrate. The almighty King of Kings values you. And he says, I got you in Jesus name. And this magnificent worship team led us to this table moment where we get to celebrate communion, our common union. There's nothing common about our Redeemer but there is a commonality to our union. He accepts us in our individualities, but he offers us all the same thing, life forevermore. In the old covenant, it seemed like they used to concentrate on an instrument called the altar. And the altar was what you did for God. You had to bring your offering and lay it at the altar. You had to put it in somebody else's hands and they performed the, the, the necessary task. But that was what you did for God. But it's interesting that it seems like in the new covenant, he flips it. 
And he says, no, now it is a communion table. And it's what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to lay down my life for you. I'm even really going to take you out of the equation. I'm going to make a covenant with God that if you'll just believe in me, you get all the goodness from me onto you. So you get to be perfect because Jesus is perfect. You don't have to work on your perfection because your Redeemer is perfect. Your sins have been taken care of. So we don't have to be sin conscious. We get to be Christ conscious. Where that's the thing that we think of. The other guy who we keep at our feet wants us always to think about what we do and what we didn't do. But all we have to remember is that he got up out of the grave. That he bore all my sin and shame. That he conquered you and death. And there's nothing you can do to me. Because he got me. He got me. So as we prepare for this table, would you please keep that in the center and the focus of your mind? It is really not about you. It is about him who was and is and shall always be. Jesus, the Christ, the Redeemer, the Savior of the world. So as these gentlemen come, would you please keep Jesus first and foremost? Has everyone been served? If you haven't, please raise your hand. One of these gentlemen will come and serve you. Amen. He won the victory. He reigns on high. Our God is risen. He is alive, he won the victory, he reigns on high, our God is risen. 
In the Message Bible, it tells us, let me go over with you again exactly what goes on in the Lord's table and why it is certainly important. I received my instructions from the Master himself and, he, and I passed them on to you. The Master, Jesus, on the night of his betrayal took bread. Having given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Would you please take your element and receive the burnt, destroyed, bruised, battered body of our Redeemer, the Lord Jesus Christ. wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of the foolishness I did in my life was laid upon him and by his stripes I am healed in like manner he took the cup and he said, this is my blood, a sign of the new covenant. Every time you take of the bread, drink of the cup, do this in remembrance of me. In, the old, in, in, in Jesus's way of thinking, covenant was more than just promise. Covenant is the way it is, no matter what, forevermore. He cut covenant with God. He took us out of the equation completely. And he said, I'm going to do this for you. And I guarantee it by the shedding of my blood. Please receive the covenantal sign of the finished work of Jesus at the cross. Our God is risen. He is alive. You want a victory. He reigns on high. Our God is risen. You are. 
Thank you, Father. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you that you are here in this place. We thank you, Father, that you are our Lord. You are our God. And Father, you've got us. You've got us, Father. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. We praise you for that, Father. And Father, we thank you. We thank you for today, Father. Independence Day, 245 years ago, this country declared its independence based on you, based on your providential hand. So Father, we thank you that for all that you've done for us as a body of believers, for us as a nation, for us in all that you've done for us, Father, in this nation, that we are free to assemble, that we are free to pursue life, liberty, and happiness, the unalienable rights that you've given to us, Father. We praise you for that, Father, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Well, welcome to International Christian Center, and I'll say it again, uh, happy 4th of July, happy Independence Day. It's a special day in this country, and because of that, we are here. Because of that, we can do things. Hallelujah. Uh, <clears throat> it's offering time in the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And as we get ready for the offering, we have several ways in which to give. Uh, you can look at, uh, look at the screens. Uh, you give online at uh, www.intl-cc.org. Click the Give button. You can give on Venmo at ICC Giving. Or if you're here in the sanctuary, we have ushers that can serve you with an envelope that you can put your offering in that. Uh, you can also mail in your offering to the church at uh, International Christian Center at 6600 Bush Boulevard, Columbus, Ohio. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Okay. <clears throat> now, if you can turn with me. Yeah, it moved. <laughs> That's why. Turn with me to Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4, starting in verse 26. And I'm reading out of the New King James. Starting in verse 26, and he said, The kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground and should sleep by night and rise by day, and the seed should sprout and grow by himself. Does he not know how? For the earth yields crops by first the blade, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain ripens, immediately he puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. What, what, what the Lord is teaching us or showing us here is about sowing and reaping. And, and sowing has to do with uh, what we do with our seed and whatever our seed is. In this case, we're talking about financial seed. We sow our seed and we do it in faith. It says in, in verse 26, the kingdom of God as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. So we're taking seed, and we're going to plant it. He says scatter. We're planting seed in the ground. Now, the seed is the finance. The seed is what we have, in this case, our money that we're going to give. When we sow it, we sow it by the words we speak. We sow it in faith. 
And when we sow it in faith, seed produces after its own kind. So it's going to come back after its own kind. <clears throat> now, as we speak over our seed, in verse 27, uh, and, and should sleep by night and rise by day, and the seed should sprout and grow by himself, does he not know how? We just put it in the ground. Our job is to put it in the ground. Our job is to speak over it and water it. The one thing we don't want to do, we don't want to tear up the seed. How many times have you seen a farmer planting seed in the ground and then a day or two or three later, nothing's happening. He digs up the seed to find out what happened to the seed. Is it growing? You don't see that. You plant the seed, a farmer does, and then in time, it takes time for the seed to grow, it'll sprout. Now, when it sprouts, he doesn't go and dig it up either. He lets it go. He lets it go as it grows and grows and grows. Now, when we sow our seed, it takes time for our seed to grow. It takes time for that to happen. The one thing we have to continue doing is speaking over our seed. We have to do it in faith and remain in faith speaking the words that we put it in the ground with to, re to receive the harvest. Now, the one thing you don't want to do is get into fear about it and tear up your seed. Oh, man, I planted seed, I went to church, I gave an offering, and I went home, and I didn't have a million dollars sitting there waiting for me. What are you saying? I don't believe it. So faith and fear can't coexist. It's one or the other. And as we tear up seed, it's not going to happen. So we have to speak and continue to speak the word. Or if you're tempted to say something negative and you don't know what to say positive about it, don't say anything. Don't say anything. The vocabulary of silence is always a good thing. Don't rip up your seed. And the sower can expect a return. One thing in, in verse, let me see, um, verse 28. Let me read verse 28 again. And the earth yields its crop by itself, first the blade, then the head, then the full grain in the head. If we look at the NIV, uh, we have the NIV. Is that the NIV? Here it is. It says, all by itself, the soil produces grain. It's the soil that produces the grain. First the stalk then the head, then the full kernel in the head. The farmer sows for the purpose of a harvest. So we're doing it for the purpose of a harvest. So, everybody with me on that? Does that make sense? Now, as we sow, we can expect a harvest from what we're sowing. Now, if you can take your offering in your hand, uh, envelope, checkbook, uh, electronic device, however you're giving, and let's pray over the offering. Father, we thank you and we praise you for your word. We thank you, Father, that you're showing us that we can sow seed. And, Father, we're doing, we're, we're taking the seed, the money that you've given to us, and we're sowing it into good ground. And, Father, we thank you that it's going into good ground. It's going into International Christian Center for the preaching of the gospel. <clears throat> for the equipping of the saints. Father, for your kingdom to grow, for your kingdom to grow. And we thank you for it. And Father, for those that are tithing, we bring our tithe unto you, Father, and we thank you for it. We present it to Jesus, the high priest of our confession. And we thank you, Jesus, that you take our tithe into the Holy of Holies and present it to the Father. We thank you for it. We praise you for it, Father, in Jesus' name. And everybody said... Amen. Now, before we get to the announcements, real quick, um, I would like to, at this point, uh, first of all, uh, Pastor Tyus is in, and Pastor Tyus, Ms. Patter, out this week. Our Director of Ministries, Matt Carmona, will be delivering the message today. And here, here's, here's, what, I, here's what I see. Anytime... Anytime the pastor turns over his pulpit, he's turning it over to somebody who's got a word from God that's going to speak. And when I have...
When, when I, in this case, when Matt's speaking, that's Matt speaking to me. That's God speaking to me through Matt is what that is. So I ask that you receive it that way, too. So right after the announcement, Matt will be up here. Uh, I'd like to release the WOW Kids. WOW World is ready to go. So if you are six months to fifth grade, you can go to WOW. And if there's anybody in here for greater than, greater than is, is meeting down the hall, too. So everybody that's in WOW, WOW Kids and greater than. Okay? Thank you. Let's see what's happening in the life of our church. Hi, I'm Shay with Members Connect, and we're so glad you're with us today. If it's your first time, whether you're in the building or online, head to Members Connect so we can help you with your next steps or to join the team. Thank you so much for watching us online. Don't forget, we are in person every Sunday at 8.30 and during our 10 o'clock service, so we hope to see you soon. baptisms on Sunday and it's not too late to sign up so if you're interested in being baptized feel free to go to our website for more information and to sign up because it's not too late Are back. Make sure to go on our website and sign up if you would like to lead a group or be in a group for our life group starting back in May. This is a wonderful time where we get to do life together, so don't forget to make sure you find your life group today. To all of my 6th grade to 12th grade students, Greater Than is back in person, so make sure you're at our 10 a.m. session and don't miss out. What's up, everybody? I'm here to remind you that this year we are teaming up. So go to Members Connect, whether you're in the building or online. Let us know that you want to join a team, and we can't wait to serve alongside you. Yo, the farmer's market is back. We definitely need help serving the community, so make sure you go to our website and sign up. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram, like us on Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube. That's all of our announcements for now. Now let's jump into the word.
I'm so glad to see you. So glad you came to church today. Uh, if you haven't noticed, uh, we are party people, and uh, that's what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, obviously, I'm not Pastor Tyus and uh, Miss Pat. They are on vacation, uh, soaking up the sun. Uh, Pastor said he will be watching. So, what's up, pops? I got it. We uh, we're still here. Everyone's okay. Y'all okay? All right, we're good. We're good. Uh, so, the <laughs> and uh, my wife and daughter have been away for a week, and I got another week at home with the dog. Uh, they're seeing my mother-in-law, and they're hanging out in Charlotte right now, and they're watching too. So, hey, boo. How you doing? Uh, so <laughs> thanks for watching. And, uh, and my family's here. So yeah, what's up, guys? I was in the little the family row. Uh, so <laughs> super excited to be bringing the word to you today. Uh, there's a lot of cool things going on in our church. If you haven't noticed, uh, the reintroduction, reopening of Wow World, uh, awesome place for our kids. Uh, I've been hearing great things about that. Kids are having fun. They're enjoying themselves. Teachers are smiling, so that's a good thing. And uh, it seems to be working, so we like that. And uh, obviously, July 18th is coming up. We're going to be outside in the parking lot doing, doing some crazy stuff. We're going to worship outside. We're going to baptize some people. Uh, pastor's going to be bringing an awesome word. We're going to have a bounce house. We're going to have a game truck. Like, it's going to be kind of crazy. And I uh, wanted you to know, just invite people out. It's going to be a great, great time together. So those are my little quick pushes. But we're going to get in the word. We are party people. Real quick, turn to your neighbor and say, we are party people. Yeah, now, now turn, to the, turn to your second neighbor, your second choice, and uh, tell them we are party people. Yeah, don't feel bad. You were the second choice. It's okay. It's all right. Second is still good. Unless you're talking to Miss Michelle, second is last. Um, <laughs> so there's that. I'm going to jump right into the scripture this morning in Ecclesiastes 8.15. 8.15. It says, so I recommend having fun. This is the Bible. I like this verse. <laughs> I recommend having fun because there is nothing better for people in this world than to eat. Hallelujah. Drink. Water. And enjoy life. <laughs> All right, mom. Uh, <laughs> that way they will experience some happiness along with all the hard work God gives them under the sun. We're going to break it down today. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this amazing time together, an opportunity to worship you, to be together, uh, and, and to lift you up in this place. God, make your word real today. Let it pierce our hearts that it would be go, going to good ground and grow something great in us. Amen. Amen. Come on. I recommend having fun. That's a good scripture. Party people is all about joy. That's what we're going to be talking about. Keeping the joy high. Okay? I want to keep the joy high these next few weeks. And uh, I, I think it would be a good idea to add some joy to your journey. Add some joy to your journey. Everyone wants to enjoy life, but not everyone knows how. Right? We all want to enjoy life, but how, how do I do that? Because life isn't always enjoyable. I don't know about you. <laughs> life isn't always enjoyable. How do I do that? And I, I think it all starts with this scripture. I think it starts when we, believe, we begin to believe this scripture that nothing is better for people in this world than to eat, drink, and enjoy life. That way they experience some happiness along the way. Experience some happiness. It all begins here. Hey, I want you to know if you put joy low on your priority list, you're missing it. Don't, don't put joy low on the priority list. I think if we begin to believe what the scripture says, you'll start to embrace a life of joy. That's what we're going to talk about. I'm excited about being able to preach and teach on some joy. Had a great first service today. 
I had to do it quick because they said, hey, we got ribs. They marinating. Like, they smoking right now. We got to go. And I was like, I get it. So I'm not going to hold you long today, y'all. Uh, I know that you got something smoking right now. Mike, I already seen your picture, bro. How long they been on there? Whoo, he said 24 hours. Y'all not going to mess with Mike's smoke ribs, let me tell you. He don't even know I'm coming, but I'm coming. <laughs> yeah, that's joy right there. I'll, be, I'll give you some joy. You ain't got no joy, go to Mike's. <laughs> For them 24-hour smoke ribs. My God. Uh, worship team, y'all was bad today. I mean, I don't know. I know I'm a worship leader, but I was sitting over there like, man, we, I told Joe, we can go home. We're good. Like, let's take this communion and bounce. So I'm going to try to uh, make your time worth staying, all right? Here's what I don't want to get twisted, right? So uh, the word doesn't say nothing else matters except having fun. That'd be cool, but that's not what it says. It doesn't say nothing else matters except having fun, but it says there's nothing better than having fun Here's the big word, while. There's nothing better than having fun while. What you doing while? So there's nothing better than having fun while you do life, right? There's nothing better than having fun while you're going to church. Y'all hear me? How about uh, there's nothing better than having fun while you're serving others, right? Time, talent, treasure, what are you giving up? There's nothing better. What, what about while working hard? You got any hard workers in the room? Come on, I see y'all. I see y'all. And so I, I thought of it as like an ingredient, like fun is an ingredient. And I, and I thought, okay, wh what are the best meals made of? Multiple ingredients. You go ahead and build that flavor. Now, I don't like cooking, right? But I do like eating. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. And I don't know a lot about cooking, but I know about eating. <laughs> and I know that if you are cooking, go ahead and build that flavor. Put a little, put a little onion in there. Put a little pepper. A little bit, a little bit of salt. <laughs> Come on, build that flavor up. All the chefs say amen. Come on real quick. So fun is an ingredient. It's not the only thing. If you're eating meals that say just add water, I'm sorry, baby, you're missing it. <laughs> that just add water meal, that's for the army, okay? That's for the tough times. Don't do that just add water meals. No, that's for astronauts. Don't eat that. <laughs> baby, God's called you for greater. Don't be, don't be eating like an astronaut. <laughs> Y'all having fun yet? <laughs> So look, the best meals have multiple ingredients, and you want multiple ingredients. If you want the best life possible, then you're going to need all of the ingredients, okay? Don't just pick and choose the things that you like to try to build a life out of. When God has said, no, no, you, you should get some joy. You should get a, a little bit of peace. How about a little bit of this? And if we take all of those things, I think we'll begin to build a life that looks a lot more like heaven. That, that's good. I like that. First point I want to make is fun is intentional. Fun is intentional. Oh, but Matt, things happen to me unintentionally all the time, and they're always funny. <laughs> I get it. I get it. Here's what I'm trying to say. Fun can happen to you, or fun can happen through you. It's intentional, all right? It's intentional. There's fun that happens to you. Oh, that was fun. I had nothing to do with it. I just walked in, fun. Or you begin to be the thermostat, and everywhere you go, you bring a little fun. Bring some joy with you along the journey. Y'all hear what I'm saying? See, you, you won't have fun through you unless you're intentional about making it fun. Making it fun. Go ahead, turn to somebody, just say, make it fun. Make it fun. You can put it in the chat, make it fun. 
<laughs> you got to make it fun. It, it's not, here's a hard truth, hard truth, I love y'all. It's not anyone else's job to make fun happen for you. It's not my job, baby. <laughs> it's not their job to make fun happen for you. You better bring some fun along. You better bring some fun along. See, if you're not going to live a fun life, if you're going to live a fun life, you got to make it intentional. Here, here's a quick story, quick story. If you know me, you know Brooklyn. That's my daughter, right? She's the one be running around here, two pigtails, and just be like doing her thing. And you, Joe's always telling her, stop running. So, <laughs> no, <laughs> in Jesus' name. Uh, and that's okay. I, I thank you. Uh, so, Brooklyn, I get the awesome honor and privilege to be her daddy. It's pretty cool. Uh, I, I uh, leave that alone. Um, so, <laughs> Brooklyn is full of joy. She is full of joy. Here's, here's what I get to do pretty much every day. I get to drive her places. It's my job. I am a personal chauffeur to Brooklyn. Uh, Brooklyn has a very busy schedule because my wife would have it no other way. Love you, dear. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so, so I get to take her to school in the morning. I get to pick her up from school. I get to take her to dance. I get to pick her up from dance. We get to take her to play dates and things and pick her up from those play dates and things. And, uh, and anywhere else she would like to go along the way. Usually it's Target. My daughter literally asked me, can we go to Target? And I was like, ooh, if you ain't your mama. <laughs> so one of the things Brooklyn likes to do is she likes to ask for music. She goes, Daddy, can you play the Frozen song? If you got kids, you know the Frozen song. Let it go. So say, can you play the Moana song? Right? Y'all know the Moana song? You're welcome. But there's another one. It's the... Uh, and I ain't going to lie. We be singing that in the car. Na -na 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 I don't know. Facebook going to take us off like, you don't own that song. Stop singing that. <laughs> So we'd be singing it, and look, it's cute. That's what she likes to do. But that's, the, that's her joy, right? She's just singing. She don't care if she sound good. We, and we, she don't sound that good yet, but I think she's going to get there. But like, so right now, we just singing. We having fun. She likes to laugh. She likes to run around like play. But, and guess what? No one taught her how to do that. I never sat down with my daughter and was like, here's how you live a joyful life. Sing songs. Run, play, ask for the same songs over and over. Daddy will love that. <laughs> and over again, every day. <laughs> I never taught her that. That was something that I really feel like she's just walking in joy. She's living in joy, right? And, and she doesn't know that there's a life waiting for her with bills. <laughs> she don't know that yet. She don't know there's a life filled with probably like turns and like letdowns that will happen, right? She doesn't know what heartbreak is yet. And f mercy on the person, whoever is the one to ensue. <laughs> brother, you don't want this. Um, <laughs> but she don't know what that feels like. She just knows joy. She knows happiness. She goes, I'm up. Let's play. The, the coolest thing my kid does is she goes, I want to go home. Why do you want to go home? I want to play with my toys. <laughs> my baby's a homebody. She's struggling right now. She's out of town. She's been out of town. She's going to be out of town for two whole weeks. And she already started calling me. I want to come home. I said, baby, it's okay. I miss Brandy. <laughs> That's the dog. <laughs> yes, these are true stories. I'm not making these up. So I thought about, I thought about Brooklyn, and I just thought, man, when we talk about having faith like a child, is that what that looks like? Is that what that looks like where the innocence of a child has so much faith in the joy of the Lord that nothing deters her from it. She wakes up full of joy. 
She goes to bed joyful, right? She, she, she wants to sing. She wants to dance. She wants to celebrate. These are the things that are in her, and I never had to teach or install in her life. She just is naturally filled with joy. I think we're supposed to be like that. I think we're supposed to be like that. And if you can think far back enough, you probably used to be like that. It's not until life, there's a, there's a, there's a, a Tyson quote that says, everybody got a plan until you get punched in the mouth. <laughs> That's a real quote, Mike Tyson said. I said, yeah, I bet. <laughs> but it's true, everybody got joy until life punched in the mouth. <laughs> And I just think God's like, hey, don't, don't let that mess you up. Don't let that mess you up. You, the most meaningful things in life may not be fun. They may not be fun. I thought about uh, education. How many of us have poured money, time, effort, late nights into your education? How rewarding is it at the end? Yes, it's rewarding. But is it always fun? That's a meaningful thing that isn't always fun, right? Uh, work, we put in 40 plus hours a week. Most of us put in more. I know, I see you. <laughs> it's rewarding when that check come, glory. But it ain't always fun, okay? Raising kids. Somebody gonna be mad at me, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it 100. Raising kids, I love, I love my baby, but it ain't always fun. <laughs> I'd be like, Britt, you want to go to the movie? She's like, it can't, it got to be a movie for her, though. I'd be like, that's not a fun movie. I don't want to see that movie. <laughs> How about going to church? Is that always fun? Well... <laughs> How about reading the word? Why why you always get sleepy when you read the word? What is that? You have the best intentions like I'm going to get in this word today. You wake up with the word on you like God. Always get sleepy. Good intentions is a, is a meaningful thing. But it ain't always fun. And this is, why, this is what I'm talking about. If you don't make it fun, it will become burdensome. If you don't make it fun, fun is intentional. I got to make it fun. All right? Because I could walk around all day, I got kids. Right? Or I could say, I got kids. Notice that S, Brittany. I said kids, more than one. Calm down. Okay. <laughs> For those who know, you know. She got a plan. And I don't know if I really got anything to do with it, but she got a plan. <laughs> just, Mastery said, just show up. Be ready. Just be ready and stay out the way. Well, if you don't make it fun, it will be burdensome. The meaningful things in life will become a drag unless you are intentional. Real quick, tell your neighbor, make it fun. Make it fun. Come on. Here, here's one thing that we do, farmer's market. How many know about the farmer's market? We do this once a month. We don't even do it all 12 months, but we do it once a month. And when we kick in the gear, it's just a few hours, 12 to 2. If you get here an hour before that or so, help out, set up, cool, all that good stuff. What do we do? Really practical. We give food to people who could use some food. Real practical, right? Uh, it's not always fun. It's not always fun. Here, here's why it's not always fun. Because you'd be like, I don't want to wear this orange shirt. It's not fun. And you'd be like, it's Saturday. I don't want to go to church at 11. Once a month for two hours. That's too much. God is asking too much of me, Lord. <laughs> Y'all hear that? Okay. That's the director of ministries coming out. Y'all better serve. Um, <laughs> it's not fun. 
I don't, they, they put me in the parking lot. I want to bag the zucchinis. Why you got me? I don't want to do the cars. I want to do that. It's not fun. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm saying. Hey, make it fun. Make it fun. I promise you, I promise you, if I could put up my job description right now, I would. I didn't think about it. I should have next time. But nowhere in my description is it make it fun for everyone. Because you got to make it fun. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, it's on you to wake up on that Saturday and say, hey, I think I'm going to live outside of myself from 11 to 2. I think it's important enough. I think it's a big enough deal for me to put my PlayStation down for three hours. Nobody want to talk about that. It's cool. I get it. I get it. I get it. I'm just saying, make it fun. We get to. I get to serve once a month the community that needs a practical need, and all I got to do is show up for a few hours in an orange shirt and smile. That's, that's a really small ask. And I, it, but it's a really big difference maker. Not only in the community, but in me. It does something in me when I choose to make it fun. Y'all with me still? Here, here's what I wrote down. I thought there's nothing better for you. There's nothing better for your marriage. There's nothing better for your family. There's nothing better for our church than having fun. Than having fun. Let's get back to that. Let's get back to that. Here's my next point. Fun is spiritual. Fun is spiritual. Some of y'all looking at me right now, I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> fun is carnal. <laughs> fun is trivial. Fun is secular. You trying to have fun? Somebody's watching. I know you are. Fun is fuel for your soul, and it's food for your spirit. That's what fun really is. It's food for your spirit. It's fuel for your soul. In Proverbs 17, 22, it says, A cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. A cheerful heart is good medicine. It, fun is fuel for your soul, food for your spirit. The thing about fun is like you can't buy fun. I Amazon. I don't even go in the stores no more. I, I can't find fun on there. I can't find it. It's not physical. M money can help, but you can't buy it. Fun is spiritual. Laughter and joy gets us through the tough times in life. They really do. Joy gets you through the hard stuff. I know somebody walked in here today and, and heard, okay, we're talking about joy. We're talking about fun. Here's this dude. It's first Sunday. You're not wearing a suit. Mm. I asked permission. Pastor said I didn't have to, so... <laughs> but some of y'all, I, I get it. Y'all are like, I got real issues though. I got real stuff going on at home. I got real stuff happening in my life. I want you to not underestimate the spiritual nature of having fun as a factor in your life. Please don't underestimate that. Because there is a spiritual nature of fun being a factor in your life. Fun and laughter brings healing. I, I, I thought about irrational joy. Joy that don't make no sense. Y'all know what I'm talking about? You ever meet somebody that you like, man, this person's always happy. Why are you always happy? You're always smiling. You're always so cheerful. You ain't got a real life. <laughs> You know what I'll be thinking? I'm like, okay, they're always like that. They ain't got no kids. That's what it is. <laughs> Y'all ain't got no kids. Um, 
But I, I just, irrational joy, joy that don't make no sense, joy that is contrary to everything that's really happening in your life. I don't want to be a product of the negative things that I'm going through, right? I should be a product of the things God's doing through me or in me. So my, some of y'all just got to tell your face to catch up with your faith. Hey, just tell your face, just be like, hey, face, we're joyful today. Fix yourself. <laughs> Fix your face. <laughs> I'm just saying, irrational joy, joy that supersedes my situation, right? Joy is spiritual. There's a, uh, there's a quote that I put in here, and, and the quote says, it's not the load that breaks you down. It's the way you carry it. It's not the load that breaks you down. It's the way you carry it. How are you carrying your life right now? Are you carrying well? Look, if you grew up in my house, you, you know about uh, how, to, how to move stuff because we like to move uh, stuff. So uh, my dad would be like, lift with your legs. Let's go. It's how you carry it because if you don't carry it right, you're going to hurt yourself right? And you're going to frustrate the other person trying to carry it with you. It's all the married people in the room. <laughs> so, so look, it's not the load that breaks you. It's the way you carry it. And if, if you walk away with anything, I hope that you leave encouraged because I want you to know that you can carry it well. I want you to know that you're stronger than you think you are, right? The things that are there to hurt you are really things that you can carry, right? Whatever it is. Nehemiah, we'll, we'll jump into that. Is this good? Y'all having a good time still? Come on. Nehemiah 8.10 says, Nehemiah said, go and enjoy choice food. Y'all realize I got all the food scriptures today. I, I, was, just, I was just thinking it's the holiday weekend, like... Somebody's cooking. My wife is out of town, so I'm definitely coming through. Let me know. Um, that's going to happen. Come and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks. Glory. Send, uh, it says, and send some of those who have nothing prepared. This day is holy to our Lord. Do not grieve for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Man, somebody should have ran right there. <laughs> Josh, you ready? <laughs> That's a friend. <laughs> Nehemiah is giving direction, giving clear direction. And he tells them, do not grieve. Don't do it. Stop. Right? And uh, he, he really, he commands them not to grieve because today is holy. Here's what I thought was interesting is that nowadays, when you say things like today is holy, what you think of is holy. It's well, it's put together. It's collected. It's tamed. Holy. It's almost like it's holy, so you should grieve. You should be sad. You should be somber, right? <laughs> and Nehemiah's like, no, 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 no. Today's holy. Stop grieving. <laughs> Chill. Here's what we're not going to do. Grieve. <laughs> he said, because today is holy. Religion says the more solemn we are, the more spiritual we are, right? And we've bought into that lie. We've bought in that, that lie that we should look more spiritual so we should be more composed, right? Ooh, but I'm excited that we're party people. I'm excited that we are party people. And, and, and Nehemiah said the opposite. He said, no, 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 today is holy. So what are we going to do? We're going to sing. We're going to shout. We're going to dance. 
We're going to celebrate. We're going to have a good time. We're going to be loud, right? We're not going to do this. We're not grieving today. Some of y'all still grieving. We're not grieving today. He said the opposite. The joy of the Lord is our strength, and that's enough for me to celebrate. That's enough for me to be excited. That's enough for me to have joy because it's my strength. I feel stronger when I have joy. I feel stronger when I have joy. It's funny because even, even real practical, in true Pastor Tyus form, I'm going to go ahead and give you some real scientific things. You ready? <laughs> Research shows us. Uh, let's call me doctor. Um, <laughs> the benefits of laughter. It actually reduces blood pressure. I wish I was making this up, but it's real. It reduces stress hormones. It's wild. I got this great thing going on here, and I, I think it's a stress hormone. I don't know. I probably need to laugh more. I don't know. But it's at, yeah, all the, all the homies is like, it'd be, it be popping in, bro. So it, 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 you know what's funny? It works our abs. Nah, nah, a lot of us could use a little more ab work, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Go ahead and get your laugh on. It gets our heart pumping. This is what laughter does. It increases your immune system. It's pretty wild. Man, how, how God created the body is insane. And how it's all connected. This is, this is what science tells us. People who are far from God are like, yeah, this is what it does. It releases endorphins. Y'all know about the endorphins. Make it fun. Make it fun. Here's my next point. Fun is relational. Fun is relational. It brings people together. Okay? Hey, single people, you've been single a long time. Maybe you just know fun. I'm going to go ahead and just put it out there. If don't nobody want to be with you, you might not be no fun. Y'all can write, write, you want letters to go to y'all? The elders are in charge, so take it up with an elder for counseling. I will, I just work here. <laughs> if y'all call the office like, I'm mad at what you said, I'd be like, you got to talk to Elder Joe. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I'm serious, though. I mean, it's attractional. It's relational. Fun is relational. You know, here's, here's something. Uh, as adults, we say, like, this is just the way I am. Right? Like, I'm not going to change. It's the way I am. I'm just like that. I just got that face. You're just going to have to deal with it. Y'all know, all the people with that face are like, so? <laughs> if you got that face, the Lord can deliver you today. <laughs> but as adults, we'd be like, I'm not fixing my face. But, you know, as a parent, whoo, we'd be quick to be like, fix your face. Fix your face. I don't care. And it don't make no sense because you know what? As an adult, you're like, I'm upset today. Don't talk to me. Leave me alone. Don't say nothing. We'd be like, I don't feel good. <laughs> I'm upset. I'm angry. Don't say nothing. <laughs> but a kid, I don't care. You're having a tough day. Fix your face. <laughs> you just be like, I don't know what's happening in your life, but put it all, fix it. Man, if, if as a parent, we can give birth to a baby, not me, but y'all, I was in the room. I was there as a support system. I wasn't looking, though. I was like, you got it, girl. Um, <laughs> so you give birth to a child, and then you feel like you have the authority to guide that child in the way in which they should go because you do. 
And one of the ways in which you believe they should go is a place where their face looks better. Fix your face. <laughs> you believe you have the authority to tell a child, I don't care what's happening in your life, fix it. But we go through our adult life with a heavenly father who I think probably wants to tell us at times, fix your face. And we be telling him, no. <laughs> we be telling God, no, well, I'm just like this. You made me like this. He like, I didn't make you like that. <laughs> yeah, you picked that up along the way. I ain't got nothing to do with that. But I, I just think that's really interesting because I, if we expect that of a child, how much more does God probably expect that from us? No matter what you're going through, fig figure it out. And you know why we expect that of children? Because as an adult, we're on the outside looking in. We have a full view of that child's life. And we see all of the great things that that child gets to do and has and is provided for, right? So as, from the parental standpoint, from a parent to a child, you're looking at their life and saying, it ain't that hard. It's going to be okay. You all mad, you upset, you got your feelings hurt, but this is a really small thing in the grand scheme of your life, child. You're going to be cool. And most of the time, they're tripping on stuff that you realize, this ain't even that big of a deal. You mad because some boy or some girl, or you mad because this job or that boss, and as a parent, you're thinking, baby, it's Subway. You're going to be all right. Chill out. You all upset over this supervisor. <laughs> Honey, you work at the movie theater. Chill out. Ain't that serious? I got you. At the end of the day, you could lose that whole gig, and you still going to have a place to go sleep, eat all my food, and use my electric. You're going to be fine. And I'm just trying to make it real plain because I'm like, I believe that God is looking at us and saying, baby, it's okay. You're going to be all right. You stressed. You real stressed right now. And you don't need to be stressed because I got you. Right? You, you real stressed out. You're thinking, how is this going to come together? How am I going to make it work? There ain't enough time in the day. How many jobs could I really work? How much money can I really save if the bills keep piling up? And God's just like, yo, in the grand scheme of things, you're going to be all right. You're going to be okay. I got you. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Have some joy. Fix your face. And I just started thinking, okay, God, I, I'll fix my face. I can fix my face because I'm expecting that of a four-year-old. Man, I hope y'all getting something today. It can begin right now. Uh, relationships get better, Right? Marriages get stronger, our kids get healthier when you make it fun. I'm going to tell all the parents something real quick. If your house ain't no fun, don't drive your kids to the neighbor's house. If your kids are always like, I'm trying to go to old boy's house, it's because your house ain't no fun. <laughs> you better have some fun in your house. Tell them that their friends should want to come over to your place. Okay? Create an environment where your kids are like, come to my house. It's cool here. This is a safe place. Don't, don't drive your kids to a place of safety in someone else's house. Create, create some safety. Create some fun. Create some love that not only your children can embrace, but their friends realize, that's something I need. I'm going to tell you something. Look. We ain't always get it right, but my house, growing up, all my friends was always there. Always. Even, even the ones that steal. <laughs> even them. I almost said something. It wasn't going to be good. I was going to call them a name. I ain't going to do it. I'll tell you after, though. Uh, it, <laughs> Even my stealing friends would come and stay over, and we would have to call them like, bruh, did you take that thing, bro? <laughs> and, and, and they would just be like, yeah. <laughs> and it's okay, it's funny now, but my mom was going to whoop them. 
You think Norma, ooh, don't do it. But yeah, they, they, they were just really good at creating a place where people wanted to be. It was always cats in there, like, come after school, we go there. Like, we would always be there. And, I, and I, it's funny because at the time, I would always be like, I don't, why do y'all want to be here? Why y'all think my parents are so cool? <laughs> They're not cool. They're like, your mom is so great, man. Your dad is so funny. You're like, he's not funny. <laughs> but a, as a parent now, I'm like, no, no, my daughter ain't going over there. Tell them to come here. I ain't sending my kid over there. Tell them to come over here. They can come here and play. Because <laughs> I'm trying to create that. I'm trying to do better, right? Here's, uh, here's one of the things that, uh, if you make it fun, real practical. Work teams, let's talk about that real quick. Work teams, they get more done, right? They're more productive. There's less turnover. There's more unity, right? When they have fun. Have some fun. I know you got deadlines. I know. Did you get the memo that just came in? Just have some fun. It's relational. Maybe we just need to lighten up a little bit. Here, here's my next point. And I'm wrapping up. I know I, know you, I can smell the ribs. Whoo, Mike, I'm coming through, bro. Mike don't know. I'm coming. Uh, <laughs> Fun is attractional. Fun is attractional. It attracts. Uh, have you ever worked at a place that was no fun? <laughs> have you ever experienced the flip side of that where you were like, oh, this is fun? Which place did you want to be? I mean, it's attractional. It attracts you. You want to be there. You want to be a part right? I'm going to put it like this. Sometimes I think Christ followers, y'all too serious. Y'all too serious sometimes. I'm just, I love you. But I just don't want to be a part of a church that ain't no fun, okay? I don't want to do that. And guess what? I don't want to do that, and I love the Lord. Imagine people that don't know God. They certainly don't want to do that. <laughs> and I get life and death and heaven and hell, and I get that that is true, and there are moments to, it is serious, but don't make following Jesus a drag. Don't do that. Come on. This is supposed to be life-giving. This is supposed to be fun. This should be the best thing that ever happened to you, Right? Following Jesus, being a Jesus, a Christian, being a part of a loving, growing church, that's supposed to be fun. Don't make it a drag. Don't make it a drag. Because I'm telling you, pe people don't want to go to funerals where they don't know anyone who died. Why I want to go to your funeral church? Y'all going to sing your little songs. <laughs> Ask me for some dollars. You're going to talk. Jesus died. <laughs> they don't want to talk about the resurrection part. <laughs> they just be like, let's pray to this statue and get out of here. Like, no. Wait. Like, hold up. I don't want to go to the funeral church. Jesus is alive. Full of life. Jesus <laughs> is hope. Right? This should be a place of life. This should be a place of hope. This needs to be a place of joy. This needs to be a place of acceptance. This should be a place of love. Come on, like somebody, this, this is what you make it. So what do you bring into the table on Sunday? I know you had a tough Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Now it's Sunday, and you bringing all your weak stuff in here when you should be bringing joy. You should be bringing life. Man. Pastor Tyus, thank you so much, Miss Pat. Uh, they decided a long time ago that they're going to lead a church full of joy. They just said, we're going to make it fun. We got to make it fun. 
I, I'm not sure if Pastor Tyus could exist in a place that had no fun. He probably would just combust. <laughs> but they decided we're going to be a church that has fun. We're going to be a church that smiles. We're going to be a church of surprises. That's, that's what we're going to stand for. We're going to dance. We're going to sing. We're going to shout. We're going to have joy. I, I, I know, like, I get to spend some time with them, and, and they, they would say things like, what we're trying to build is a church that looks like heaven. That's why they would say, like, we're not a black church. We're not a white church. We're not a, we're not a Spanish-speaking church. We are International Christian Center, and we were built to look like heaven because there's probably not a black heaven. I don't think there's a white heaven, right? All the Spanish speakers go this way. <laughs> he said, no, no, no. Let, let, why don't we try to be a church that represents what heaven looks like? And heaven isn't crying. Heaven's celebrating. Heaven's dancing. Heaven's singing. Heaven has joy. And I think he wants us to look like that. Come on, church. We want you to join in. Hey, if you could just stand to your feet, let's, let's go ahead and close this out together. We want you to join in. Open your heart. I believe that this could be really a day that saves your life, that saves your marriage. The day that you received joy. Come on. The day that you chose joy. That 4th of July Sunday where you put all the meat in the oven to keep it warm, came to church, this could be the day. And I, I'm excited about that. I just believe that this could save somebody's life. Don't miss out on your life today, all right? Jesus said, I have come that you may have life <laughs> and have it more abundantly I didn't come to make your life miserable. I didn't come to make your life sad. But I've come to bring life. Let's just pray this together. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this word. Let joy lead me every day. I give my life to you so that you can lead and guide me every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, can you just put your hands together for Jesus in this place, for joy in this place? If you have joy, you have strength, come on, just give God some praise. And, and if it's your first time praying that, make sure that you check out Members Connect if you're in person. Uh, make sure you check it out online, go to Members Connect. But I, I, I'm excited about what God's doing in our church. I'm excited to be a part of it. And I'm excited that you're here with us. All right, church? So um, y'all want to sing some? Y'all want to do some? Hey! I'm excited. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We actually have uh, popsicles because it's the fourth. And that's at Members Connect. So make sure you grab a popsicle before you go in person. Online, we love you. Thank you for joining us. Have an awesome week. We'll see you next week. We're just going to sing a little bit, and then you guys are released. Thank you again. the risen king 
and you're seated in majesty because you are the reason you kept me 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 and i'm alive because your life i'm alive because your life i'm alive because your life I have joy because I have joy because your life I'm still standing because I'm still standing because your life I have peace because I have peace because your life I have joy because I have joy because your life I'm still standing I'm still standing because your life guys for joining us today. Have an excellent week. Whether you're here or at home, again, just uh, come to Members Connect um, and let us connect with you. Love you guys. Have an amazing week. And happy 4th of July. Thank you again, Pastor, for that awesome word. If this is your first time with us, make sure you go to our website and tap in with Members Connect. Also, don't forget to like our Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube. There's many ways to give, and here are some. Thank you so much for joining us. And we'll see you next week.